Hi, uh, we are going to discuss how to work with powers of I. First of all, let's remember basic facts about the imaginary unit, which is what I is. So, the square root of negative 1 is what we call I, and I squared is defined as negative 1. So, we're going to take a look at several powers of I, starting with 1. So, obviously, I to the first power is the same as I. I squared, as we know from here, is negative 1. What happens when we try to go to i to the third? So i cubed is, can be broken down as i squared times i to the first. This is using properties of exponents. So i squared is negative 1, i to the first is i, we're going to get negative i. i to the fourth can be broken down as i to the third times i to the first. This is, by the way, not the only way to break it down. There are other ways to do that, but there's just one possibility. So i cubed, as we already know from earlier, is negative i. i to the first is i. You multiply negative i by positive i, you're going to get 1. So what happens when we go to i to the fifth? You are going to get, um, you can write it as i to the fourth times i, which is 1 times i, which is i. Again, I want you to note this. Okay, i to the sixth. You can break it down like this. You are going to get negative 1. Matches that. i to the seventh. After all this work, you're going to get negative i, matches this. That's why I have this color matching. i to the 8th is going to get 1. So you should be able to see that there is a pattern. We have i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. So, did we observe the pattern? I think so. And um, it appears that we go in circles of 4. Right, every four is going to repeat itself. So that pattern is going to continue. So let's see how we can use this. If we need to try to do i to the 11th power, what can we do here? Well, it's a little higher, so what can I do with 11? I can, for example, take i to the 11th power and write it maybe as one possibility as i to the 8th times i to the 3rd. As long as my exponents add up to um, 11, I'm fine. So. What do we know from earlier about i to the 8th? i to the 8th is 1. i cubed is going to be negative i. And the answer is going to be negative i. I'm just going to give you one other possibility how you could have done that. You can use i to the 6th times i to the 5th. That also adds up to 11. So i to the 6th is negative 1. i to the 5th is i. And you're still getting negative i. So what can we do with i to the 14th power? Well, I don't know, one of the possibilities we can do is 7 plus 7. Again, not the only way to do that, but certainly a possibility. So i to the 14th could be i to the 7th times i to the 7th. 7 plus 7 is 14, so they're both negative i. So you need to be careful, i times i is negative 1 and times 1. So it's going to give us negative, neg I'm sorry, negative 1, right? Okay. So i to the 16th power. Well, since we went up to i to the 8th, we can probably write that as i to the 8th times i to the 8th. 8 plus 8 is 16. So what are we getting here? That's 1 times 1, which gives us 1. Okay. But what happens when we have to go to even higher powers? Because that seems like you know it works okay when you have somewhat of a lower exponent. So what about higher powers? So 29. Well, as long as we can break down 29, there are two methods we're going to look at. Um, as long as you can break 29 into powers that are going to add up to 29, you're going to be fine. So since we went up to 8 uh, on that on one of the previous pages, we can say, okay, I can use i to the 8, let's maximize it, times another i to the 8, that gives me 16, plus another, I mean, times another i to the 8, 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24, so I need 5 more, so i to the 5th, 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 5 will give us 29, right? So i to the 8, as we know, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, and i to the fifth, if you refer back to that previous page, is i. And the answer is i. Okay, and that's it.
But like, like I said, uh, that's one way to do that, but it seems to be a little tedious if you think about going to even higher exponents that could be um, not so much of a challenge, but just very time consuming. So what do we know? We know we're going around in circles of four. So the question is, how many times Uh, 4 goes into 29 but that's not really our question what is the remainder basically if you think about dividing 29 by 4 what is the remainder of that process all right let's think about this together so 4 goes into 29 7 times 7 times 4 is 28 so the remainder is going to be 1. That means that i to the 29th power is going to be exactly the same thing as i to the first power because all the multiples of 4, multiples of 4 can be tossed. You can throw them out. So you start by 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and 28. All these things are thrown out because each one of them equals 1. And then your answer is going to be simply i. Okay, So let's use this second method with the powers that you're going to see in the, the examples that follow. i to the power 62. So if you divide 62 by 4, 62 divided by 4 is going to give us what? We're going to get uh, 15, 4 goes into 62 15 times and the remainder because 4 times 15 is 60, the remainder is going to be 2. That means that i to the power 62 is going to be exactly the same thing as i squared based off the remainder. Okay, And i squared, as we know, is negative 1. i to the power 89. So if I try to divide 89 by 4, 4 goes into 89. How many times? It looks like 22 times, right? Because 22 times 4 is 88. The remainder is going to be 1, right? 4 times 22 is 88, and we're going up to 89, so there's one more. That means that i to power 80 to the power 89 is exactly the same thing as i to the first power, and it is one, uh, just i i to the power 1 of 4. So 1 of 4, uh, one thing with 1 of, I'm sorry, 1 of 4, 1 of 4 divided by 4 is actually going to divide evenly. It is going to give you 26. Uh, some people think there is no remainder. That is not actually a correct statement. The remainder is 0. So that means it's going to be the same thing as just simply going with i to the power 0. So i to the power 1 of 4 is the same thing as i to the power 0, and we know anything to the power 0 is 1. Basically, if, if your number is a multiple of 2, you will get 1. 4, 8, we already saw that. Um, and uh, i to the power 130, so we do 130 divided by 4. Uh, I do want to point out one thing I'm not. Uh, I'm writing that as division here. I am not simplifying these fractions. You do need to keep them divided by 4. So how many times 4 goes into 130? It's a little bit of a higher number, but you know, it's possible. If you divide 130 by 4, it's going to give you a whole number of 32. Right? So the remainder is going to be what? Uh, so if you do 32 times 4, that is going to give you 128, right? So with 128, you still have 2 remaining, so re the remainder is going to be 2. So our i to the power 130 is the same exact thing as i squared, and that's negative 1. Okay? And that's pretty much how this works. It is a, a, a simple process. Uh, the only things that you need to understand here is uh, the circles of 4 and how to determine the remainder of dividing a number by 4. So your remainder can be anywhere between 0, 1, 2, or 3 when you divide a number by 4. Okay? I hope this helps.